first part that is the definition of your aerosol now now what are aerosols aerosols are aerosols are nothing but a pressurized dosage form okay aerosols are it's an option yes 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 aerosols are pressurized dosage form okay so uh, this is this is the aerosol container okay and they are the pressurized dosage form because the contents are released through pressure okay and it contains this aerosol it contains solution it contains suspension or it may contain emulsion so these are the various kind of formulation that are present inside this aerosol so it is a pressurized dosage form containing solution suspensions or emulsion and they may be containing one or more therapeutic active ingredient like the dosage form it may be containing one active ingredient or it may be containing more active ingredients okay which upon actuation okay what is the meaning of actuation it is nothing but the action that causes uh, that causes a machine or device to operate okay this is an actuator this device is known as, known as an actuator uh, when you are going to see your valve etc that time you are going to talk about this actuator so upon pressing this okay like you press a button and the fan starts in the similar manner on actuation okay what does the aerosol do it emits a fine dispersion of liquid okay so it emits liquid or it may be emitting solid so if it is uh, if your formulation is in the form of solid then it is going to emit solid if your formulation is in the form of so solution then it is going to emit liquid or if it is in the form of suspension then it is going to emit the uh, solvent system along with your solids okay and if the formulation is in the form of emulsion then it is going to emit uh, it is going to emit a uh, foam okay so it uh, it uh, upon upon actuation okay what it does it it emits the fine dispersion of liquid or solid material in a gaseous medium so this is the gaseous medium this gaseous medium is made up of propellants okay so this gaseous medium in this gaseous medium what you have is your solid particles okay or you may have your liquid droplets which have been which have been what they are dispersed okay right got it so if you see the definition now pharmaceutical aerosol is a pressurized dosage form containing solid suspension or emulsions okay of one or more therapeutic agents active ingredients which upon actuation it emits fine dispersion of liquids or solid materials in a gaseous medium so that is how you define a pharmaceutical aerosol now they these aerosols they also may be containing auxiliary substances okay what are the auxiliary substances that are present inside this aerosol may be solvents they may be solubilizing agent they may be emulsifying agents or they may be suspending agents so along with active ingredient what we talked about there might be some other ingredients also which we talk as excipients okay or we talk as an auxiliary substances that are present depending again upon the formulation what you have added inside this aerosol okay like you have solvents you you have to add a solvent you may be adding solvents you may be adding solubilizing agent if it is a solution you may be adding uh, emulsifying agents if the formulation inside is an emulsion or you may be adding a suspending agent if the formulation inside is a suspension so auxiliary substances are also present along with this therapeutic acting ingredient now these pharmaceutical aerosols are present inside a special container why do we call them as a special container because they have to withstand the pressure that is created inside this container okay hence these containers are very special in nature okay under the pressure of gas so they are they are presented they are put in a special container under a pressure of gas so this is the formulation okay here you have the formulation and inside uh, and this uh, formulation above this formulation you have pressurized gas over here inside the system you have pressurized gas okay so they are presented inside a specialized container under the pressure of gas okay and this contains of what this pressurized gas consists of what it consists of propellant or mixture of propellants right and how are the medicaments released as we talked about earlier 
the medicaments are released from the container in the form of an aerosol so this is the form in which the contents are getting released in the form of an aerosol upon actuation of the appropriate wall this assembly from uh, 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 starting from the actuator up to the dip tube you have this assembly this hole is known as a wall this again we are going to study in one of our lecture we are going to talk about the wall we are going to talk about the container in one of the lecture and we are going to talk about the propellant in today's next part of a lecture okay so this is about the introductory part of your uh, that is the definition or understanding of your aerosol okay moving ahead let us see what are the different different types of aerosols that are present okay so if you if you see uh, there are four types of aerosol one first type is the inhalation aerosol okay now inhalation aerosol as you can see over here these are intended okay to be taken by mouth they are also known as meter dose inhalers okay now what what are meter dose inhalers Meter dose inhalers, as the name suggests, it consists of a meter dose. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, in a, these are the aerosols. Okay, whereby a potent medicament is given to a patient. Okay, because uh, uh, you require the potent medicament to be given in this specific dose, isn't it? Hence, you these are the meter dose inhalers. They are known as the meter dose inhalers. Okay. And uh, 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 where do they uh, where do they de uh, deposit their uh, 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 ingredient active ingredients? The active ingredients are deposited in the pulmonary artery, in the pulmonary area. You intend that it should go inside the pulmonary area. In this area, you want the drug to be deposited. Okay, and it is given through the mouth, right? So it is given through the mouth. You can see over here, these uh, aerosols are given through the mouth right and they are designed in such a way that it releases the measured quantity of api upon each actuation so once you actuate it once you press it then what is happening it with each actuation a measured quantity of api is given so these are nothing but inhalation aerosols to be given through mouth and to be deposited inside the pulmonary tree containing meter quantity or exact quantity of drug which is delivered per actuation right the second type of aerosol are nasal aerosols as the name suggests they are given through nasal roots also known as nasal mdis okay and upon each actuation they deliver the drug okay inside the nasal cavity okay the next type of uh, aerosols are lingual aerosols lingual aerosols are depositing the drug onto the surface of the trunk upon each actuation okay the next type of aerosols are topical aerosols okay now topical aerosols as the name suggests they are they are depositing it on the skin isn't it ready spray you know very well if there is some muscle sprain etc if there is some pain etc okay backache etc then you use this ready spray okay move ready spray etc now what do they do is they emit the drug okay in the form of fine particle everybody is emitting the drug in the form of fine particle or droplet so everywhere this word fine particle or droplet fine particle or droplet fine particles or droplet so they are all emitting the drug in the form of fine particles or droplet one is emitting in uh, in the mouth okay intending for pulmonary one is in the nasal cavity okay for um, uh, for the nasal vestibule then the next is uh, uh, on the surface of the trunk and while this is on the Applied applied on the skin on the surface of the skin. Okay, so depending upon where it has been applied, okay, and which part you want it to get, uh, uh, which part is getting affected, depending upon that you are going to apply it. Okay, depending upon that the aerosols have been classified. That is inhalation aerosol, nasal aerosol, lingual aerosols, and topical aerosols. Right. Moving ahead. With the types of aerosol as per USP or even as per IP, these aerosols are uh, classified into two phase aerosol. Okay, the types of aerosol are two phase aerosols or three phase aerosol. What do you mean by two phase or three phase aerosols? Now, two phase aerosols are consisting of two phase. 
one phase is gas which is made up of propellant okay and second phase is of liquid which is nothing but a solution right so it is made up of two phases that is gas and liquid here the active ingredient is in the form of solution okay whereas over here in three phase system the uh, uh, the uh, uh, active ingredient or the formulation is in the form of emulsion or in the form of suspension okay so this immersion is a two phasic system suspension is a two phasic system along with that you have one phase of your propellant or gas okay so you have one phase of gas on you have uh, your two phase that is uh, liquid liquid or here you have two phase that is solid liquid okay are you getting me so these are about the three phase aerosol let us come back to your two phase aerosol so two phase aerosol consists of a solution of an active ingredient so this is your one phase that is solution of active ingredient and you have the second phase as a liquid uh, sorry uh, uh, solution of active ingredient in liquefied petroleum and the second phase is the vaporized uh, propellant so if you have your container inside your container you are adding one phase as your solution okay right so this solution may consist of your uh, uh, aqueous phase right or it may be consisting of your uh, uh, what you call that uh, uh, non aqueous phase but it is a solution inside this solution you may be adding your propellant we are going to see propellant in detail so inside this along with your solution your propellant may be present and above it is present your vaporized propellant okay so your gas is present over here that, that this again we are going to see in great detail when when we are going to move further so a gas is present over here this gas is actually applying the pressure on to this propellant okay uh, sorry on to this a uh, solution so you have a solution over here in this solution propellant may be present as one of the ingredient but this is your one phase right which is a liquid phase and then you have the second phase which is your gaseous phase so this is your liquid and your gas phase so this is a two phase propellant right now this solvent may be composed of what it may be composed of propellant it may be com consist of mixture of propellant it may be consisting of solvents such as alcohol propylene glycol or polyethylene glycol so this all are present in this system okay in this one phase system right then you have a three a two phase system uh, sorry three phase system in this three phase system i said there may be suspension or there may be emulsion along with the ga gas right so if it is a suspension let us assume that it is a suspension right so the suspension consists of what it consists of an active ingredient so you have the active ingredient sorry you have the active ingredient is present okay then this active ingredient is dispersed in what it, it dispersed in a propellant system so here you have a active ingredient here you have a propellant here you have other excipients you have wetting agents you have uh, solid particles you have talc you have colloidal silica in short what you have you have a suspension along with a propellant a propellant or a mixture of propellant may be present in liquid form this propellant will be present in liquid form along with that you will having so this is a two phase system as it is a suspension it itself is a two phase and this is one phase that is made up of gas so this becomes a three phase system okay containing suspension then you have another three phase system which is made up of emulsion okay so this is the emulsion that is been present so what does the emulsion consist of you know very well it consists of two phases of liquid you have water phase you have an oil phase right these type of system are also known as foam aerosol because once you apply uh, what you call that uh, once you actuate it right on actuation what comes out is a foam as they are also known as a foam aerosol it consists nothing of an emulsion and a gaseous propellant let us put it in this way it consists of a gaseous propellant so these are the two phases that are present in it so it consists of more one or more active ingredient along with the surfactant it consists of an 
aqueous or non aqueous liquids that are present over there now if the propellant is in the internal phase okay then in a oil and water type of an uh, emulsion then the fluid is what it is stable whereas if the propellant is present inside the external or continuous phase then it is uh, then the uh, it is a quick breaking form is been discharged a stable form it is a non stable form that is getting formed the main thing that you have to remember over in types of aerosols are in types of suspensions are uh, sorry types of aerosols are that there are two types of uh, uh, system it is two phase aerosol or it is a three phase aerosol in two phase aerosol it is solution plus gaseous propellant or or gas solution plus gas in the three phase aerosol it is either emulsion or suspension along with the gas okay once you, once you see the further parts okay once you talk about the propellant in detail once you talk about the uh, formulation in detail once you talk about the containers in detail you will be in a better position to appreciate this two phase and three phase aerosols okay so there are two ways that we have classified it we have uh, seen the types of uh, aerosols we have seen the types of aerosols as inhalation aerosols nasal aerosols lingual aerosols and topical aerosols on the way in which it is been applied and on the surface on which it is applied or we have seen the aerosol as per usp and as per IP. that they are divided divided into two phase uh, two types that is two phase aerosol and three phase aerosol two phase aerosol consists of gas and liquid okay and three phase aerosol consists of gas liquid and liquid or if it is a emulsion that is gas liquid liquid or if it is suspension that is gas liquid and solid okay so these are the uh, uh, types of your aerosol okay let us move on to the advantages of aerosol advantages and disadvantages of aerosol as a dosage form so one of the advantages of uh, aerosol is there is no direct contact of uh, of the uh, person or the patient with the medicament isn't it the patient does not come in the person does not come in direct contact with your medicament right because what you are doing is you are pressing the actuator and the medicines are coming out you are not touching in tablets also you touch the tablet in uh, in ointments also in creams also if it is applied topically you touch the medicament and then you apply it. whereas if you see even if it is oil that you are applying on some part then also it is getting uh, uh, you touch that part isn't it you touch the medicament here there is no direct contact of your uh, body with your hand with your medicament okay second it avoids the first pass metabolism so if you have seen that it is given through what route it is given through nasal route so once it is given through a nasal route it is not having first pass metabolism it is not going inside the stomach so whenever a system goes inside the stomach from there it is absorbed okay from the gi tract it is absorbed uh, it goes to the liver where it has first pass metabolism but whereas here it is given through mouth where you want it to be deposited inside the on the pulmonary tree uh it is given through nasal route uh, so no uh, question of oral route it is uh, given by topical route again no question of oral route or it is given on to the lung uh, sorry on the tongue okay so again no question of the first pass metabolism so uh, aerosol is usually avoid the first pass metabolism if it is a mdi that is metered metered dose aerosol then in metered dose aerosol what is happening is a spe specific amount of drug okay is getting removed from the uh, from the container okay uh, next so uh, you can give uh, the uh, right quantity of dose to the patient through aerosol next is no microorganisms can enter inside the container because you are never opening the container you are not exposing the contents of the container till the uh, till the end okay so microorganisms cannot enter inside your medicament right because you are not opening the container the environment it releases the con content in a controlled and uniform way so the uh, so the uh, contents are released in a controlled way also and it is released inside the in, in a uniform way also as it is totally packed so it protects the photosensitive medicament also 
okay and it also uh, uh, protects your oxidative uh, oxygen sensitive material as it is not getting uh, uh, what you call that the contents are not getting uh, really are not getting exposed to the environment okay so it protects your oxygen sensitive material also moreover how it can consist uh, how it uh, protects the oxygen sensitive material you have the container inside the container you have the uh, solution along or suspension along with the propellant okay and on the top you have gaseous propellant that are present okay so there is no question of air that is going to be present over here right so again oxygen sensitive material are been protected because of this way also then the next is you can easily withdraw the drug from the container it just be on actuation okay it is easy and convenient to apply you can apply you know how you apply release spray etc it is so easy and it is so convenient even if you want to apply something in, inside your nose cavity it is very easy and convenient to apply right and it shows faster onset of action right the next thing is the are the some of the disadvantages it is costly in nature because of the container because of the wall and the whole assembly the product becomes a little bit costlier in nature uh, it is uh, difficult to uh, dispose of the empty aerosol container uh, sometimes allergic reactions have been seen uh, the propellants are explosive in nature uh, mostly when you see uh, hydrocarbon propellants these hydrocarbon propellants are explosive in nature okay so uh, they do form flammable or explosive material okay so they are explosive then uh, not your cfc if you take your cfcs uh, then they are not uh, uh, propellant then they are not explosive in nature but your hydrocarbon are explosive in nature then uh, the, the formulation is also a little bit difficult many a times and uh, the sometimes the propellant may also cause the toxic reaction also this propellant uh, the CFC propellant, if you take, which are non-explosive in nature, but your CFC uh, propellants are uh, hazardous to the environment. They affect the uh, ozone layer. Okay, so these are some of the disadvantages of your propellant. Now let us see the basic component of your aerosol system. The aerosol system is made up of propellant. Okay, so that is present over here. Then it is made up of container. So we are going to talk about container. Then it is made up of a wall. So this is the wall. It starts from the actuator. It ends up in the dip, dip tube. And lastly, it made, made, is made up of product, product concept.